In a moment, a monumental carving in a woolly mammoth tusk. Shane Wilson's work in progress. The Northern Encounters Arts Festival in Toronto is for artists with one thing in common. They live near the North Pole. They might be musicians from Finland, mask dancers from Greenland, or carvers from Nunavut. One artist in the festival is Shane Wilson, a sculptor who is carving a prehistoric woolly mammoth tusk. Tina caught up with Shane at his home in Faro, Yukon, before he headed south. Now, Shane, I have to ask you, where did you get a woolly mammoth tusk? Well, I got the tusk from a placer miner in Dawson. They uh, come across these tusks occasionally. Uh, a full tusk, as you see here, is rare. Uh, often they'll find pieces of the tusk. Uh, uh, they'll find uh, skeletons of woolly mammoths. Uh, recently, they found an old prehistoric horse, you know, one of those tiny little horses with the, with the, the skin and so on on it still like it was frozen. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So, so you bought this then from one of these guys? I did, yeah. They sell the um, uh, ivory for so much a pound. So I know you usually do a lot of work with moose antlers. Why did you want to turn to this tusk for this carving that you're doing? Well, it's another kind of medium that's available locally. And uh, my preference is to use local media. The antlers are local, uh, the moose shed them every year, there are plenty of them around, mm -hmm. and there is a lot of ivory around as well. I think at one time they said there were six million uh, woolly mammoths roaming the plains in this area, and so they've left behind a fair amount of ivory. But the going back in time aspect must appeal to you. I mean, there is something so magnificently old and ancient about this. Well, that was part of the idea, that this, this particular carving uh, on the full tusk is uh, my way of celebrating the millennium. Uh, looking back to the beginning of time, when this tusk was laid down in the, uh, in the permafrost 12 to 40,000 years ago, we as a people as a, were just sort of coming out of the woods, as it were, and developing culture and moving forward. And so the idea will be to use the tusk to create an abstract kind of work of art that represents that human journey. But what a great idea. So you've mapped out pretty clearly what you're going to put on the tusk then, have you? Um, well, I've given it a lot of thought. I think uh, uh, because the tusk is not a new medium, elephant ivory is, is fairly sound. It's fairly um, easy to carve because it's, uh, it's uh, sound all the way through, whereas this, this ivory has been sitting around for a long time. And so it's developed a lot of cracks and a mm -hmm. lot of uh, inconsistencies. And so uh, the pattern or the design that I put on the tusk will have to change and will have to sort of adapt as I go along, depending on what I uncover. So tell me about the design. What are you going to be carving on it? Well, I, uh, I'm going to try and represent four um, aspects of, of what has made us human. Uh, the first aspect being our... Uh, our minds, our thoughts. Uh, because we are thinking creatures, we form thoughts and ideas and, and culture can move forward based on those ideas. And so I'll represent the progress of ideas through a series of um, uh, shapes, angled uh, overlapping planes and shapes, uh, some concrete kinds of, of um, images, similar to the images that I have on a piece called Candle Ice or on Duality mm -hmm. on the one side. And then the next would be the progress of the human spirit, which would be represented through more flowing lines. Um, and again, uh, on a piece uh, like the Tangled, or uh, uh, Celtic Confusion is what I call it, mm -hmm. or on the other side of duality, you'll see those kinds of lines represented there. And then a new pattern that I'm going to lay throughout the tusk are a series of overlapping human hands to represent our uh, physical ability to manipulate the world. Um, with our opposing thumbs and uh, our, our ability to use tools and so on, we have created much of what we have around us, technology and so on. And, and then the last, uh, the last feature will be to inlay in the, the cracks, you see a number of cracks on the tusk, um, uh, gold, uh, gold nuggets from, uh, from the Dawson area and flakes, and they'll be laid in a, in a bed of glue, but it'll, uh, they'll, they'll fill the cracks all the way up, and that'll represent money, basically, and the ability for human beings to um, 
abstract our energy. You know, we spend our energy, we spend our lives in making money, mm -hmm. and then we trade that money for things and to, to do things. And so it's, uh, it's basically human energy represented through the gold. That sounds great. How big a job is it, though? It's going to be, a, I think, a, a mammoth undertaking. <laughs> Pardon the pun, um, eh? <laughs> 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 It'll probably take a, a couple of years to do. So when you come out this way to do your work, people will be able to watch you carving, will they? That's right. And in fact, I'm saving the first uh, carving for the McMichael. So I'll begin the carving at the McMichael Gallery. Mm -hmm. And uh, it will be in no way completed by the time uh, I leave. But the idea is that people can come and watch not only myself, but the other artists that are there working on their pieces and ask questions mm -hmm. and... Uh, have a chance to provide some feedback and interaction. That's nice, isn't it? Because art, of course, is such lonely work. Yes. It, it's lovely to have somebody there with you. Especially way up here, you know, you're yeah. hidden away in your cellar carving and uh, the rest of the world is a long ways away. And sculpting is full-time work for you? I mean, one can make a living doing this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> People are always a little surprised when, as an artist, you say, yes, I can make a living doing what I do, but yeah, you can. Well, that's great to hear. And I do. So this is your day job? Your full-time job. This is my day job, yes. <laughs> well, yes. It's, uh, I know it's going to be spectacular. It looks great even now. It's been really nice talking to you, Shane. You too, Tina. Bye-bye. Bye now. Now, since we recorded that interview, Shane and the Tusk have come down to southern Ontario, and Midday did go to visit him at the McMichael Gallery in Kleinberg. Shane is working alongside other northern artists in the Tupic, which is a traditional Inuit gathering of carvers. He started the carving by tracing children's hands onto the tusk, and with each outline, the pattern slowly takes shape. Next, he carves a relief of each hand and breaks through the layers of prehistoric ivory. As visitors look on, he creates his vision of the millennial woolly mammoth tusk. Isn't it beautiful? It's going to be spectacular when it's finished, too. As he said, it's a long, long road ahead of him. But I love the idea that he's putting gold in it, yeah. you know, from his area, from Yukon. I think it's wonderful. I guess, you know, all artists have enormous respect for their materials, but when your material is like a 15 to 40,000 year old piece of organic material that, that was found bur buried in the permafrost, and it's just such an enormously beautiful, and, and the, the arc in it was so gorgeous. Yeah, so significant. And also, you notice he's putting hands on, and he talked about that. And of course, because he is an artist who works with his hands, it also has personal meaning for him. Yeah. So it's quite a lovely piece. But can you imagine a mammoth with two of those things on their head? <laughs> no. <Gosh. laughs> How do they walk? I know. Uh, we'll be right back.